what do you make of the fact that people have religious experiences? What do you make of that exactly? And well, you say, well, that's epiphenomenal. It's like, well, yeah, is it really? Like, are you so sure about that? So let me give you an example. So I talked to Brian Murarescu and Carl Rock a while back, and they'd be doing some investigation into the Eleusinian mysteries. And uh, Murarescu's book is predicated on the idea that what the Greeks were doing was using a, an LSD spiked wine, essentially, mm -hmm. to produce a collective mystical experience that, and they had technologies to harness that so it was collective, and that that constituted the core of the Eleusinian mysteries, and that that enterprise was practiced by the ancient Greeks for thousands of years continuously, and that that experience was at the basis of the unity of Greek culture, but more than that, that it was the fountain from which Greek wisdom flowed. And so, it's a revelatory hypothesis, by which I mean, sorry, it's a, it's a hypothesis about the function of revelation in a society. If these drug-induced, dreamlike states of religious experience are the fountain from which a culture like the Greek culture emerges. Well, what are we supposed to make of that ontologically? I mean, we're great admirers of the Greeks, right? We, we see our culture as, as, as certainly the rational element of it, and perhaps a tremendous amount of the aesthetic element as deeply rooted in Greek presuppositions. It's like, well, is that, are the Eleusinian mysteries, that religious element, is that an aberration? Or is it, is it that, which in, that within which everything else is embedded? This is, a, this is a fundamentally important question. It's not something trivial. I, I really don't know what to make of it because it, it throws the whole problem of, well, the ontological significance of psychedelic substances into the mix, and that's a thorny problem if there ever was one. And that's a problem of the lower meeting the higher, that's for sure, right? These chemical substances that can reliably induce overwhelming mystical experiences. You can just set that aside and say, well, that's a form of insanity, uh, uh, but it, it's not right. schizophrenia. It, it, it's not obviously within the category of, of mental illness. And then, and to, you know, to Murray Rescue's hypothesis runs quite contrary to that. Not only is it not insanity, it's, it was a vital source of, of revelatory knowledge, philosophical knowledge, and, and got the ball rolling in some sense. So... God only knows what to make of that. But, well, there's, I mean, there's lots of experimental work being done on this right now, the Griffith Lab. I, I, I did a, an experiment in my lab, right? It's not epiphenomenal. Uh, people who have more mystical experiences have more meaning in life. It's a reliable correlation. But Yeah, they become more open. Yeah, the personality open, uh, undergoes a yeah, permanent transformation. Well, at least longstanding, yeah. Uh, that's yeah, well, point, yeah. a couple of years anyways. Like yeah. it's, and it's not trivial. It's no, one no, standard yes. deviation in increase. It's a big difference. So, uh, so a good friend of mine, who's a genius, by the way, um, and so I listen to what he has to say, and he's a technological genius. He talked to me about his, his mushroom experiences when he was a mixed up teenager, you know, engaging in various forms of delinquent activity. And he said that from the, after his psychedelic experience, his sense of what was right and what was wrong was massively heightened and he abided by it from then on. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I look at his life, it's like, well, you know, you've, you've accomplished a fair bit and he's a very solid person and quite the monster in, in the most positive way. And <laughs> You know, you can't just dis dispense with that. It's like, well, it, it taught him the difference between good and evil, and then he abided by that for the course of his life. And, and you know, when, when, when Griffiths, Griffiths people have, his laboratory subjects have these mystical experiences, and they quit smoking. Yeah. And you think... And if you take a look at this work, you'll see, like, it's... Uh, so it's ontonormativity. People encounter what they call the really real... Um, and, and it's really unusual because normally what we do is we take these experiences that are disconnected from our everyday intelligibility, like a dream, and we say it's not real because it doesn't fit in. People do the opposite with these experiences. They say that was really real and all of this has to change to get closer to it. Let's go back to this nested idea, right? I, can I just say something about psychedelics, yes, which please is, do. is important to mention, is that 
I mean, obviously a lot of people are talking about it right now. And I did, you know, I did watch that interview with Murarescu. And I think that in this question of psychedelics, I think we're actually seeing an, an, an increase of the problem that we're talking about, this kind of alienating problem, which is that psychedelics seems like a very nice solution because there it is, there's the mushroom. I can analyze the chemical substance. I I can, I can. So when we talk about the Eleusinian mysteries, now everybody's excited to talk about the spiked wine, but no one cares to talk about the entire ritual in which this was embedded. And it becomes this kind of weird reductive thing in which mm-hmm. the tool that we can identify, which is, you know, you can, you can put it in a box and you can, you can nicely uh, identify it. Then everybody's attention goes there right now because of our kind of materialism and our, and our, and so I, I find it very difficult because you know, what, what we saw psychedelics do in the 60s is that ripping open the veil, supposedly, in a world where the ritual around, let's say, the coherence of society, the place where society coheres together and engages in a common ritual and in common attention and in common storytelling. And then we kind of throw this stuff out into a world that is individualistic and based on, on everybody's own little whims is not necessary, is going to, I, I think, and I, we saw it happen, is going to create these experiences that are frameless and instead of binding, will we'll, we'll continue to kind of fragment our society. I'm really worried about this psychedelic. I, go ahead. Just to respond to, to Jonathan's criticism, I mean, this, the point that Jonathan is making is being recognized by people in the field. First of all, there's a, there's a distinction even in Griffith between a psychedelic experience and a mystical experience. And secondly, yeah, okay. most people are clearly indicating, for example, all the therapeutic interventions using psychedelic and the evidence is mounting that it's not the drug that does yeah. it, right? It is the drug in, in concert with the set and setting, the therapeutic yeah. framework, all of this other stuff. Has. You have, to, and I consistently argue for this, you have to have this wrapped in a sapiential framework because it is. Mm-hmm. it can just as much take you off into self-deception as it mm-hmm. can into right into self-correction so yeah. I, I i but, but i want to be clear that there's a lot of people that take the criticisms that have been made here very seriously and it's actually woven into a lot of the research yeah well That's it's good. interesting with, with regards to the scientism issue so if you look at griffith's research so you you see that his subjects take psilocybin and then they have a mystical experience and then they quit smoking or they're less afraid of death it's like and the way it's written up in the journal is it is bottom-up drug effect because there's no description of the content of the mystical experience. It's like, well, the drug produces a mystical experience and then people don't smoke. And and the scientific journal format only allows for that. And so, but then there's this question that's like, this is a big question. It's like, okay, well, why are these people no longer afraid of death? Mm -hmm. Like, did that switch just get turned off? Well, that's not, that's not how it works there. The whole view they have of reality has been reoriented in some manner. And what manner? It's like, well, what happened exactly? That's, that's an even more key question. And it's relevant to Jonathan's point. And then John, to go after your, you a little bit on this topic, Jonathan is pointing to something that's 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 a very intelligent caution, mm-hmm. and that is that I know you know that I know you know that, and these these hypotheses of set and setting are they're just the beginning of that surround that needs to be created oh, yeah. to integrate these experiences into the broader culture. They're just they're you know they're not much changed from the early '60s. Well, you have to be somewhere calm. You have to be with someone who you know is going to take care of you. It's like yeah, that's we're just barely beginning to to figure out what to do with this. And then Bishop Barron, I I believe for what it's worth, and I don't know what you guys think about that. I think that Revelation is a psychedelic account, literally. Oh, the Book of Revelation. <laughs> I really believe that. You bet. You bet. I think that the author of that had a psychedelic experience, and all he did was write down what happened to him. No, it's and too that grounded. That might not in be the- right, but. It's too grounded in the Old Testament, right. the, the classic apocalyptic literature. I mean, it's, Half it's not of it is according why, to Daniel. Why is, that, why is that an objection? Yeah. Why is that an objection? He was grounded in that tradition, and all of that tradition was, was made vivid in imagery during the experience. That's not be, not, certainly not beyond the, the, the confines of such experiences. So, And I think the church is going to have to wrestle with this seriously in the years to come, because there's an association between psychedelic use and revelatory meaning 
that the church is going to have to grapple with. 